go! What up y'all and welcome back to another one. Uh, today's video is one that I have been planning, uh, planning a series of sorts uh, to start doing for y'all. Y'all have missed uh, the Foul Fridays where we get to sit down just like this over in the flower chair which is behind the new boat. Yes, this is the new boat that y'all have not seen yet. Yes, there will be a video to come, but if you can hear it, the shop is uh, going crazy because we have a winter storm out. So once it gets nice weather, uh, we're going to make the first boat video, but I wanted to put it in the background so y'all could get a little peek at it. So moving on, uh, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, uh, my channel is mainly about bird hunting and waterfowl in particular, duck, goose, uh, but pigeon hunting a lot and uh, for me I start shooting my uh, shotgun sometimes more starting now because of the amount of pigeon hunting that I do. Uh, I always, first off I always get asked what my favorite pigeon load is as you can see a pigeon on the front of the box of the Federal High Bird. This is a lead shot and yes in fact it is my favorite pigeon, dove load, anything like that. So I thought it'd be a good time uh, to run through the first video in this series and it is going to be inertia driven semi-auto shotguns. The reason why I'm doing this video is because I have encouraged a lot of new people to get away from the old pump action and get into a semi-auto and with that uh, there's a lot of new users here that love shooting them, but are a little afraid and a little intimidated to break them down and keep them clean. Uh, I remember one of my first bad experiences breaking down my pump shotgun. I lost a few pieces and then I found them and then I didn't know where they went. I will be very honest with you. This is just my two cents. Most inertia driven semi-auto shotguns are probably easier to break down and clean than a pump gun. Now, I'm not doing a gas operated gun simply because I don't own one. All I have is inertia guns. Uh, I do want one uh, and we'll probably get one here on uh, the channel to break down and I need to learn how to break one down and I need to learn every part of them as well. Just, as, just like some of you. So, welcome to the channel. I'm glad we're doing this. Uh, I miss all of our shotgun videos. Uh, today, let's get right into it. What we're working with is I selected a few different guns that I knew were pretty dirty. Um, so we're gonna clean them, break them down, and see how they all go back together. And I'm gonna take my time. So this is gonna be a little interactive, long video for all you guys to take home something. So, today uh, we're gonna start with the Rite Gordian. Uh, they sent me this gun. This is a three inch chambered gun. It does not shoot three and a half. So I have a Pattern Master full choke on the end of it. Um, first off, again, before we get started, a few tools that I like to have, which, mind you, I have never broke down uh, this Rite, uh, and I have never broke down this gun. This is a Impala, Impala Plus, that they sent me as well. It is also a 3-inch gun. I have never taken it apart. So, we're going to learn something today together. Tools that I have on deck. Um, just a small screwdriver or anything skinny to press out these pins. It's very easy, you just need something skinny to fit through the hole. Uh, and then to grab the pin on the other side, just a small set of pliers and then, yes, a cleaning slash oil agent, a spray that you guys love. Any type of CLP out there, honestly guys, I always get asked what I use. If it says CLP, um, get it. it. It's really good. One thing about lubes, guys, one huge thing, uh, a lot of them have some water-based substances in them, and I have ran across big issues where I use the wrong lubricant, and we go out hunting the next day, and it's very, very cold, you know, below 20 or 10 degrees, and my gun literally freezes up. And I'll show you what freezes up once we get into the gun uh, it is the firing pin and I'll show you how it freezes up with lubes that are freezable if that makes any sense. So my last tool that I use is a compressor with a decent little blower on it. Now here's my thing about compressors guys. 
Me, myself, I love using compressors just because simply you can clean it a lot better. Uh, toothbrushes always work with some rags, but with a compressor, if you're delicate with it and you use it the right way so you don't mess up your gun, they're very nice because it does clean them out really well. Now, the only thing about compressors, make sure that you bleed it first. This is a little valve where it pushes out the water. Let's see, yeah, look at that. I'm gonna have to clean this up. That's pretty gross. And honest to gosh, I have done that many, many times now. Ugh, yeah, it's gross, but you wanna do that every time before you do clean your gun. I do that every single time before I clean my gun. And it's probably been, it's only been a week or two since the last time I cleaned my Benelli. And uh, that's how much moisture has built up in there. So let's get some paper towels. Let's get to work. All right. Uh, yeah, if you don't get the water out of your compressor, you're going to blow water inside your bowl, inside the firing pin and all that. So like when we fire up the compressor, it's going to be really loud, but I'm going to blow it out for a while and make sure all of the moisture is out before I put it in my gun. So first off, let's go ahead and break down the old, uh, the old rete here. This will be the first time I've ever done it too. Like I said, we're going to take our time on this video and I really want to, today's video is to build confidence, um, for you guys to have your guns clean all the time. Now we all, we all seen, uh, the last couple snow goose videos and, uh, I had some really dirty guns. That is really tough. Holy cow. Wow, you can tell it's never been taken apart. First thing I do is pull the trigger. So that means push this through. I might need to use my pliers. I've never taken it apart, so it's pretty, pretty darn tough. Jeez. Holy smokes. Cut is always a first for everything. This is the first time this gun's been torn apart, and that pin. Still got some really good oil on it. That was tough. I, I really had to push it through. See, so you got to push that pin out. Then what we're going to do, this is your uh, bolt release. Push it. Just falls right out. Now, oof. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah. See that? Look how dirty that is. I've only used this gun... I think I let two clients use it this year. My dad used it last season on a pigeon hunt. Um, and that's, and I've used it a couple times. So if anything, it's just rode around in the back seat with Fred and got disgusting. So the trigger's out of it. We're gonna unscrew the top here, which I'm sure that's gonna be a pain in the butt again because it's never been taken apart. Now, the first thing, uh, I get a lot of questions about adding extension tubes for you know pigeon or snow goose hunting um, some guns you cannot yeah like this gun the re this rete in particular you cannot put an extension tube on the end of that gun see how it comes out a tube won't fit on here shells won't be able to feed through here it has this bolt sticking out so before you buy a gun if your plan is to see how that slid right off if your plan is to want to put an extension tube on your shotgun, look into the gun first because you may not be able to. And this gun, we got to pull the bolt knob off, whatever you want to call it. Everybody has a different bolt handle, sorry. There's our bolt. It's very, very, very straightforward. This is going to go in and out. Uh, this back here is where the hammer hits. Watch this. Hopefully this focuses for you guys. So see, this is where the hammer strikes and it pushes this in. If I hold the bolt down and I push in that button, might have to use something to do it. See if the bolt, or see if the firing pin comes out the front. I'm sure it does. See that? See how that firing pin comes through there? Watch when I let go. See how it goes in? comes out goes in comes out that that feels really good a lot of times you want to use something skinnier 
and just work it a little bit and it's really freed up that right there is where a lot of uh, water-based lubricants will get in there get in that firing pin get in the spring and it frees it so when you again hold that back hold it tight and just see if it works really well and this one it does works really well my Benelli um, and I'm sure we're gonna find it with my Franke my Benelli was like sticking it was because it was froze I had to shoot lube down in there and work it a lot blow it out with the compressor work it a lot blow it out wipe it do all the stuff and it just got cleaned out now a lot of times that issue right there uh, that that issue it's not just freezing lubricants guys dirt grime uh, residue everything builds up inside the spring inside that whole mechanism so getting it cleaned out is a big deal and, and that is what can uh, produce uh, misfiring when we like to blame the shell company and it's usually not the shell company's fault you know this slides off um, I always take my choke out a lot of people love to blame ammunition companies but um, it's most of the time it's not their fault it's uh, the user's fault for not keeping it clean unfortunately and I hey I'm guilty of it too so here we are this is uh, completely broken down ready to clean as you can see it's completely open all we have one two three four five don't lose your pin Keep all these parts, do it on a table so you don't lose anything. Six, seven, eight parts, nine including the choke. Lay them out, don't lose them, first of all. I'm gonna grab us a towel, throw it down here. What I usually do, take some good lube and I just get it in there in that bolt. I usually spray it down that firing pin a little bit, let it work in there. Just wherever there's grime, I usually rub it with my hands pretty good. Now I'm just going to kind of let it soak for a minute. And I'm going to do that, that with everything. The only thing I do not spray lube in is my trigger system. Um, I think keeping it dry, keeping a lot of that oil out of there that does collect dirt. Oil collects, collects dirt. Having a real oily gun isn't always good because it collects more and more and more and more dirt. So we're just going to blow that out with the compressor as as well as I'm going to blow all this area out with the compressor. Um, I'm going to go ahead, take some lube, squirt around inside here. I usually have a toothbrush, but today I don't. It broke on me, and I think Bodie threw it in the trash, <laughs> my, my little boy. Uh, this, this lever here, you want to get some good lube in there. Spray it down in there. We're going to work all the gunk out. Let it sit for a minute. Let it do its job, and then, as well, we're going to spray it out with the compressor as well. Now, guys, you can really get in here and blow this out. Nothing to really worry about with the pressure of uh, the air compressor. This, too, kind of be delicate when you're getting down in here in the spring, but you want to blast some air in the firing pin, really get it dried out as much as you can. Again, the trigger system is where you need to be careful. we, we got some small springs here. So you don't want to go taking 200 PSI, shoving around in there and it just blowing it to smithereens and you end up losing this spring and this little arm and all this stuff. So if you use an air compressor, please be careful. Do not blame me when you overdo it and you end up blowing the thing apart, you know. So don't oil it unless you need to. I'm gonna get to blowing. Yep, I told you it'd be loud. The way it goes. I really need to buy a big, big new compressor for the shop, but we've let her soak quite a long time. What I do, guys, I hold it upside down and I blow out. So all of that dirt comes out this end. All right, it doesn't take much. It really doesn't take very long with the compressor. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit that. I'm just going to hit everything real quick. Again, the bolt, you can get pretty close to. My compressor's only putting out about 
100 PSI right now, which is about perfect. I, once you know you have no moisture in your compressor, put it up against that firing pin. Blow that hole out real good. But this, uh, the barrel, I usually just blow out this whole bolt area, the combustion area if you want to call it. That area usually isn't very bad. You just kind of got to clean off the carbon that builds up right there around the ring. A um, little bit of CLP and a toothbrush goes a long ways if it's built up bad. Uh, one big thing that people tend to forget, which I'll get to in one minute, trigger system again we're built back up with a good amount of pressure just be delicate just gonna blow in every hole crevice even the uh, firing the hammer um, pick it up off safety blow it out I usually like recock it, blow it out. Everywhere you can, blow it out. Uh, there's that one thing that people tend to forget. Um, your choke threads. Guys, take your chokes out. Take them out and clean them. Honestly, other than this right here, usually uh, what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of cleaner Spray it on my choke. Guys, keep them chokes clean, and better yet, keep them lubed. That's why uh, a lot of you out there, I guarantee you, uh, I'm guilty of it. I have seized up chokes in, uh, in my shotguns, and sometimes it's almost impossible to get them out. So here we are. We have all of our cleaned parts. Everything looks really, really good. Uh, we're going to just go ahead and throw it all back together. Um, I usually start off with... What do I want to start off with? Uh, one thing that I didn't cover. So right here, down in the seat, you have your recoil spring. It's basically a little cup, and the end of that needs to be in that cup. Now, um, if you don't have it seated right, guys, um, go ahead and slide your bolt in. Every, every gun's built a little differently, but if you look at the bottom, you can take this. See, here's our... Here's the end of the bolt. You can put it right in that cup so it falls right in there. And if you take your bolt handle, throw it. Whoop, did I have it on right? Whoop. Whoop. Okay. Be delicate, Bob. Throw it on and make sure it works right. It should go all the way back and all the way forward. Now, your trigger system. Um, I usually have it cocked. And again, you're gonna push in your release button. You're just gonna slide it in there. Should be fairly easy, just like that. That's where it sits. You can always put some light through that hole, make sure it's lined up good. And that pin, I'm gonna rub a little lube, a little bit of grease, a little bit of oil on that pin, and look at that. With a little bit of oil, she slides right in, just new. My Benelli, my Franke, I've torn them apart so many times that these pins, they just go in and come in and come out. But again, I haven't messed with this gun very much. As you can see, the Rite, one cool thing about the Rite, really uh, accessible with the plug. You can just pull it and put it back in. Um, but there we are. This is all put together. We're going to grab our barrel and slide our front foregrip on and then this is the part that people get intimidated by just take your time you don't have to shove it together work it together line this up this should just slide together pull this back give it some room kind of just work it grab the barrel push it down make sure it's all tight then all we got to do put on our cap we're going to snug it down really well I hope that this video really helps you guys, especially all you new gun owners that have switched to a semi-auto. I'm sure a lot of you uh, have, have just found what I've always said. Guys, go to a semi-auto gun because you're shooting. I usually knock it around and make sure 
that's as tight as I can get it. So throw her back on safety with it unloaded. I know dry firing is not cool, but you always do want to make sure that it does work correctly before we just take it out into the field and uh, try her and something's messed up. So she is in good working condition. Only last thing is the choke. Again, it's always a good idea just to do a little little shot of uh, oil. Spread it, spread it around on that entire choke. You don't need a bunch, but put some oil on them threads before you put it back in your shotgun. That right there is my go-to way to clean all of my guns, especially all of my semi-auto guns. So, real quickly, um, we're gonna go ahead and break this one down just because I never have. Um, I like these videos. I like doing these videos. Um, you guys are always interested in learning things about shotguns in particular. I'm a shotgun guy. I don't, I don't own a lot of pistols. I don't own a lot of rifles. I do own a lot of shotguns. I was raised on shotguns, uh, pheasant and quail hunting, and they have become my livelihood. How I make my videos, guide service, hunting, everything. So, if you guys uh, want to keep these type of videos going, what we could do, I've had a lot of questions on extension tubes. And this is a plus three extension tube, I believe, or two. And then I have my Benelli, which is like a plus 10. If you guys want to do a video on, you know, how to install, how to clean your extension tubes, because I know there's a lot of people that are interested in extension tubes, but again, might just be a little intimidated to buy one. Drop a comment down below, let me know. I'll bust that video out literally right now uh same thing in cap pulls off every inertia gun is pretty much the same um take your bolt pin out and there's there's always 10 ways to skin a cat just because the last time i took the trigger mechanism out you can do it either way maybe i spoke too soon this gun might be a little different Okay, again, brand new gun. I have used this gun twice, and I really like it. I really do. Had a lot of questions about these Impala Pluses, and I will tell you, they will not accept an extension tube, and I believe they're a lot like the Rite where the plug is just, I can't grab it. Yeah, there it the plug just slides out. And these Impala Pluses, one cool thing about them, man, they're an awesome budget shotgun. These bad boys, again, when you're getting ready, so this one has two pins. One, two, press it, pull it, pull your bolt. All of them are the same. Uh, the cool thing about these Impala Pluses, big shout out to them for sending me this gun. Uh, they are reasonable price. They are very reasonably priced. Very, very reasonable, like 500, 600 bucks. 400 bucks depending on which model you do get but again this gun it is not dirty because your boy has not used it much and honestly it does not need clean at all I, I, I wouldn't be doing it any justice to just go spraying a bunch of lube on it again the the firing pin really good really released looks like it's in really good operating order not going to do much. Plunger, that plunger's good. I'm going to wipe it just a little bit. Maybe spray it. Just spray this out because it's got a little bit of chunky business in there. What was that? But there we go. We're going to go ahead and just whip this bad boy together. I didn't mean for this video to be this long, honestly, honestly but I hope you guys enjoy it. Hopefully I did it right to where you can see what I'm doing. So again, press the button, slides in, line up your holes for your pins. Just look at it. Just look at it, would you? Throw your pins in. They go in a lot easier than they came out. Again, the first time taking these pins out might be a little hard just because it's a new gun. Yeah, they, that one goes in pretty tough. So. I'm going to have to...
press them in there just a hair. There's that. Ooh, there's that. Okay. Then we're going to take our bolt, slide it in. Kind of did this butt backwards where I should have put the bolt in first so I could have lined it up. But now we're going to be kind of shooting in the dark. We're going to throw, I think that's where it needs to be, how you can check. Throw your bolt deal on, your bolt deal. Make sure it comes all the way back. Looks like that's where she needs to be. I'm going to wipe some crud out of there. Again, it's in awesome working condition. Take your time, slide her together, press down on that barrel, and put your cap on. It is that easy, y'all. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna throw a little bit of lube in the uh, in the choke. I always do. I always because I one time I got my choke seized up, and we had to take a torch and heat up the barrel. Finally got it out with three guys holding the gun, and we had pliers and crescent or monkey wrenches and all sorts of junk trying to get it out but there we are guys um i hope you enjoyed this video um, i did because i got to clean my gun and hopefully entertain you guys and teach you something um, i'm not out here again for all the haters out there i am not the best waterfowler i am not the best shotgunner but i do have a decent platform being my channel to share my tips to share my experiences and just try to help somebody out there so that's all it's about it's not about being the best i could care less about that i just want to build the community i want to uh, build the hunting community these days it's hard to be a hunter it really is we got to uh make sure we give and keep hunting under a good name uh, be respectful handle our firearms with safety and care, um, pass on uh, ethics, good ethics in hunting, and uh, pass on the great American tradition, which is firearms. And uh, sadly, they're trying to be taken away from us. And uh, if we don't stand up, then guess what? It's going to happen. Thank you all for being here. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Let me know if you want to do the extension tube video, I will have a few or at least a couple different guns with a couple different extension tubes to teach you all how to install and how to clean and maintain them. <sighs> but other than that, um, I have some duck calling how-to videos that I've been put, putting up on Uncut Outdoors. Uh, Uncut Outdoors is a platform that me as a hunter, I can do whatever I want over there and I won't be suppressed, banned black shadowed, whatever you call it, anything, um, but over here I can. So if you guys want some of those hunting tips, let me know. We're going to be doing a lot of shotgun stuff here. So give me some good tips. Thank you all for being here, but until next time.